Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And uh, I'm, we're, we're still in Mark chapter 10, and I want you to uh, hear this passage that is one of the most incredible teachings of Jesus. It's one of those life-changing teaches, teachings of Jesus if we will actually take hold of it and live it. Um, it's found in verses 35 through 45, and uh, it, it begins with James and John, who are, who are two of the closest disciples to Jesus, coming to Jesus privately and making a request. Now, uh, I don't know if you've ever made a request for a privilege or an honor, or uh, you just thought, hey, I'm the best for this job and I should get this ahead of anyone else. Uh, but we all have that inclination to think that we deserve uh, just to be a little bit ahead of everyone else, to be in the top position, to be number one, if you will. Well, James and John came to Jesus and they said, Lord, we want you to give us the seats of honor in the kingdom. We want to sit at your right hand and your left hand. We want to be above all the other apostles. And, and Jesus said, you don't even know what you're asking for. You don't understand what's involved in this. And, and then the other you know, disciples, they heard about the request and they got mad because they didn't think of it first. Uh, they, they got mad at James and John that they thought they were better. They wanted that position. And, and they're all bickering like a bunch of whiny children. And Jesus pulls them together and he addresses them in, uh, and teaches them in a way that resonates through eternity. I want you to hear what Jesus said to them as they're bickering about who should be the preeminent apostles. He says in verse 42, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Right? Rank has its privilege. The boss is always right. Whatever word you want to put in there. Uh, you know, that's what he's saying. This is how the world operates. And he says, But it shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. You see, the, the ethic in the kingdom of God is not the same as the ethic in the world. And we know that, but do we choose to live it? Because Jesus said, if you want to be great, nothing wrong with that. He, doesn't, he does not condemn the desire for or the ambition for greatness. He doesn't say, hey, I, I hold this against you that you want to be great. He just says, look, for the kingdom of God, we operate differently. And if you want to be great, you need to be the servant of everyone. You want to be first, you become the slave of everybody. Because in my kingdom, even the, the, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ himself, did not come to be served but to serve and give his life as a ransom. That, that, that is so life-altering if we'll live it. In other words, we get up in the morning, we're not thinking about what we can do for us, we're thinking about what we can do for others. We're not thinking about how our needs can be met, we're thinking about how we can meet the needs of others. And when we make that switch in our mind, it changes everything for us. It changes the way we approach life, the way we approach, uh, approach other people, the way that we approach doing church. By the way, Calvary tries to live this out as a church. It's why we did the Serve Our Schools project. And I know, I hear it from people, oh, I'm so tired of serving. I don't want to go paint curbs. I don't want to go paint classrooms. Uh, can't we do something else? Can't somebody else do it? Actually, nobody else is getting up and offering to do it. It's the people of God who say, you know what? I want to be great in the kingdom. I'm going to be a servant of everyone, even if it's public schools who uh, a few people may say thank you, but most people will never know that we did it. It's why we uh, distribute backpacks uh, so that you can fill them up and we can give them away to people that you'll never meet that will have a Christmas and know from somebody that God cares enough about them to give them some, uh, just some toys, some, some, you know, personal hygiene items, some educational items. It's why we do Angel Tree Christmas Project, where we take gifts to, to the children of people who are incarcerated. It's why we encourage you to sponsor Children of Compassion, because uh, it, it's pouring Jesus into the lives of kids living in utter poverty in other countries. It's why we encourage you to serve on an individual basis and on a church-wide level because we want to be a great church 
And we want to be those who represent Jesus in great ways. And we want you personally to be great in the kingdom of God. So I hope and pray that this truth penetrates your life and you decide, hey, I want to be great, so I'm going to become a servant of everyone. God bless and rejoice in the fact that Jesus served us by being our Savior. Have a great day, Calvary.